Salutations to all. This is John without an H from the good CCP, and today I've invited you all here to share a beer. This was supposed to be a Sapporo, but they ran out at the store. And to share some news. Did you know that Sega Sammy Corporation has, in fact, established a brand new development studio in Sapporo, Japan? Well, it's true. New video games coming out of the same place that gave us this beer. Well, this other beer that's not here right now. This is a cure in light. The announcement was made public on Sega's official website on January 11th of this year, entirely in Japanese, like a Kurosawa movie. And no one saw it coming either because, if I'm being frank, and remember, I'm John without an H, this news is somewhat baffling. The new game studio is officially called Sega Sapporo Studio, and according to its website, which is 100% up and running, link in the description, it was officially established on December 1st of last year. Now Sega's official statement about the purpose of this studio is pretty vague. Sega Sapporo's website simply says that they'll be responsible for developing games related to Sega IPs and debugging. The official announcement on Sega's main Japanese website is even more vague, saying the studio was created due to the increased demand for games in a global market. Well, duh. There's also a brief statement from the mayor of Sapporo, Katsuhiro Akimoto, who's basically stoked to see the video game industry come to his city. Well, we should say come back to his city because Sapporo is the original hometown of Hudson Soft and the birthplace of the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16. Wow. El Presidente and CEO of Sega Sapporo, and the guy with the best parking spot, is Takaya Sagawa, a designer and game producer who's been with Sega since 1992 and from what I gather, his entire professional career. He's a cool looking dude with a very spiffy motorcycle jacket, which is exactly the kind of personality we've come to expect from Sega. Tell me Takaya Sagawa's favorite arcade game isn't Hang On. I mean, is this guy tough enough or what? In his early days, Takaya Sagawa mostly worked on sports games for consoles like the Sega Saturn and the Dreamcast. But for roughly the last 10 years, he's been a lead producer for various games developed for the Japanese mobile gaming market. Most notably, he's the lead producer of Fantasy Star Online 2, a free-to-play massively multiplayer online RPG that's been popular in Japan since it launched in 2012. It currently has over 9 million registered users, and he even spawned an anime in 2016. If you've never seen the game in action, then just imagine World of Warcraft, but instead of a medieval fantasy setting, all the characters are anime cliches fighting giant creatures in a brightly colored futuristic setting. So it sort of looks like a lot of Japanese games these days. Monster Hunter, Pokemon, I can't even tell the difference anymore. After a long delay, a western version of the game was finally made available for the Xbox One and PC in 2020. With its large and now global fan base and its crafty use of microtransactions, it's safe to say that Fantasy Star Online 2 has been an important investment for Sega. In fact, a financial report published by Sega Sammy in August of 2021 reveals that Fantasy Star Online 2 has brought in over 9 hundred million dollars in sales to the company. So when I ask myself, why in the world has Sega created a new development studio in Sapporo, Japan? I can't help but think, after knowing it's being led by Takaya Sagawa, that it's probably for the sake of developing either more mobile games, or maintaining the continued success of Fantasy Star Online 2. Lord knows they need some wins right now. And it looks like Sega Sapporo Studio is now hiring. There are jobs available for both experienced mid-career candidates and part-timers. Part-time work is solely relegated to playtesting, which is how a lot of people actually break into the game industry. But the mid-career people they're recruiting include 3D graphics artists, client programmers for PCs, consoles, and smartphones, as well as people experienced with managing and coding for online servers. All stuff that sounds like they're putting together a game studio centered around online gaming, which is compatible with my suspicion that this studio is dedicated to free-to-play mobile gaming. Probably more Fantasy Star Online 2. Or maybe Fantasy Star Online 3. Ooh. But let's be real. None of us wants to think that this is true. When we hear that Sega has created a new video game development studio, our imaginations automatically go straight to classic Sega franchises that we know and love. Or perhaps even to something new and exciting. The kind of crazy creativity that made consoles like the Dreamcast so special in their time. But no, the most likely scenario is that they're working on Fantasy Star Online 2. But can you blame them? When that game is approaching a billion dollars in revenue from microtransactions? Okay, so I guess it's alright to blame them a little. Where's my Kirin? 
Thank you, my good man. Cheers. If you've seen our video about Kenji Matsubara, the former president of Sega's game division, then you'll recall that Sega Sammy has gone through a number of corporate restructures over the last few years. In response to weak financial results, the establishment of Sega Sapporo's studio is probably the result of more of that, and it's possible that this is all nothing more than a grand rechristening of Sega's Online Research and Development Studio 4, or Sega R&D 4, which was already headed by Takaya Sagawa, and which was already in charge of producing new seasons of Phantasy Star Online 2, and other mobile games. If there's a significant difference between Sega Research and Development 4 and Sega Sapporo Studio, then it's probably probably an expansion from a focus on Asian markets toward the inclusion of Western markets as well. Fantasy Star Online 2 is already available on Xbox and PC. Perhaps maintaining that requires a bigger physical presence in another city. Perhaps Sega has ambitious plans for similar games that will appeal to more global interests. Western Sega fans have always had slightly divergent tastes from Japan. What if they were making a free-to-play Sonic the Hedgehog based MMORPG? Oh no. They wouldn't do that, would they? On November 1st of 2021, Sega issued a statement to their investors regarding a formal agreement between Sega and Microsoft to establish a, quote, strategic alliance that explores ways for Sega to produce large-scale, global games in a next-generation development environment built on Microsoft's Azure Cloud platform. This, according to the same memo, is in keeping with Sega's super game strategy. That means the company will focus on large-scale, global, online, community-based games that utilize IPs. In other words, online gaming in groups with players across the world, which again points to Fantasy Star Online 2. Sega must have been really happy with how Fantasy Star Online 2 has been going since its Western launch in 2020 and perhaps an entire game studio in Sapporo will allow them to focus not only on new content for the series, but also make sure that they can fulfill their exclusive deal with Microsoft in a way that makes both of them happy. I think given all of this that it's almost certain that Sega Sapporo Studio is nothing more than the expansion of Sega's pre-existing online research and development so that Sega can build on the success of one of their only true big money makers over the last 10 years. Only now, since it's an international endeavor, out in a completely different city? Takaya Sagawa is basically just doing what he's already been doing since before 2012. Only now he's got a bigger title as the president of a unique subsidiary. But why Sapporo, Japan? Sega Sammy and most Japanese game developers are out in Tokyo. Capcom and Ubisoft have offices in Osaka. And of course, the Big N is out in Kyoto. But Sapporo? Ever since Hudson Soft quite sadly went out of business in 2011, Sapporo has been devoid of any major game developers. The only thing coming out of Sapporo lately that gets me excited is the beer. And look, I didn't even get that. All I have is this Kirin Light from Tokyo. And what's it taste like? Well, to be honest, it's pretty good. Inoffensive? sparkly, and it's like only 3.2% alcohol by volume, making it the weakest beer I've ever had. Which probably explains why it's a mere 95 karori. At 95 karori, I could see myself having one of these every day at my local izakaya. After my 14 hour shift away from my wife and children, I give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Super nice! But why Sapporo? Sapporo is a city of nearly 2 million people on the island of Hokkaido, in the northernmost region of Japan. It's known for its cold, snowy winters, and famous for its many ramen noodle shops. It once hosted the 1972 Winter Olympics, and it's world famous for its eponymous brand of beer. But what makes it really unique is its history with America. Sapporo was established in 1868 by the Japanese Meiji era government in an attempt to colonize and populate the wild country of Hokkaido. Two years later, Japanese officials approached the US government for assistance in developing the land. Under President Ulysses S. Grant, a commission was established to aid in the development of the sparsely populated Sapporo into a modern city. For years, American advisors went to Hokkaido to continue this effort. In 1883, Hokkaido University in Sapporo was founded by the American William S. Clark, who had been the president of the Massachusetts Agricultural College. This heavy investment into Hokkaido by U.S. officials, and no doubt special interests, generated some very unique 19th century American architecture 
that can't be found anywhere else in Japan. Indeed, Sapporo is now kind of famous for its many older but somehow very western structures. Could it be some kind of symbolic gesture on the part of Sega Sammy to establish a new game studio in Sapporo? Could it be a way of honoring the close international ties shared between the US and Japan long before the Second World War? Is this a celebration of our historical bond of friendship? Is it a way of showing Microsoft just how incredibly committed Sega is to the cause of mutual success? Or is it just because it's cheap? Looking at the rent in Sapporo, I'm realizing that they probably just went there because it's cheaper. Sapporo is one of the five cheapest cities in Japan despite also being the fifth largest city in Japan. How can that be? It's cold and it's wet. The average high in January is below freezing and it snows or rains every other day. This is great for skiing, but would suck for Japanese commuters stumbling home from work at 10 p.m. Sega Sapporo boasts on their website that their new offices, and I do mean new offices, are a mere five minute walk from the nearest Sapporo train station. That sounds great on a nice balmy 50 degree Tokyo evening, but this is Hokkaido. You're gonna need a team of dogs and a sleigh to get home before you freeze to death. So now I get why it costs so much less to live in Sapporo. It's basically the Buffalo, New York of Japan. Seriously though, Sapporo looks pretty cool. I'm a fan of the beer when I can get it. We should probably take a trip out there. I like to ski and I hear the ramen is very good. I'd love to see the remains of Hudson Soft's former glory as well. Anyway, that's our interpretation of this news from Sega. At first, it's rather exciting to think that there's a new game studio bearing the name Sega because of all that implies. But looking into it a bit more, we realize it's almost certainly going to be a free-to-play MMO studio in collaboration with Microsoft. That means more Fantasy Star Online 2, which has been good to the parent company, and perhaps similar games in the future. I don't know about you, but that is not what I was hoping for. I'm still waiting for Skies of Arcadia 2. Maybe a 3D version of Ristar? A proper sequel to Alex Kidd? Beyond Oasis? Shinobi? Maybe a new Golden Axe game similar to what Streets of Rage got? Panzer Dragoon? Or maybe something surprising and wacky? The way Super Monkey Ball and Yakuza once were, over 15 years ago. But a mobile game rooted in microtransactions? I think I'll pass. So what do you all think Sega's up to in Sapporo? What do you guys think about Phantasy Star Online 2? Have you ever played it? Do you think we'll ever get a massively multiplayer online Sonic RPG? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye now. You have been watching Creative Cat Productions Super Show. Please like and subscribe if you wish for many future happy times together. Your wishes will become our success.